the dealer for a banjo that he designed, had designed for him by a banjo company. And he was in town, so they called me up. Do you want him to do a workshop for you in your store? Sure. So he came in, and I brought him my jigging shoes, because those of you who have seen him know he plays the fiddle and does clogging at the same time. So he saw my shoes sitting there, and he said, what are those? I said, those are my dancing shoes. He said, can I see him? I said, sure, that's why I brought him in for you. So I gave him my shoes. He turns them over. This is John Hartford, world famous musician and clogger. He turns over my shoes and says, what are those things on the bottom? I said, they're taps. In fact, they're double taps. He said, where'd you get them? I said, at a shoe store in Allentown. He said, can I get some? <laughs> I said, sure, but you don't have to. If you want some, let me know. I'll get some for you. So he says, would you? I said, sure. So a couple of weeks later, I get to the shoe store in Allentown, get some taps, send them to him. And a week or two later, I get back this picture. It says, for Keith, thanks for the shoe taps and thanks for your friendship. John Hartford. <laughs> Pretty neat, I think. Huh? <laughs> we all know that besides playing the fiddle and the guitar, John also played the banjo. Banjos are used a lot around here. There's three main styles to playing the banjo. Well, there's two types of banjos also, two main types. The four string, which is used in uh, mummer's string band parades, and Irish music. It's called a tenor banjo, and it only has four strings. It's tuned differently, played differently than the five string. This is a five string or folk or mountain or old-timey banjo. If it has a back on it, which mine doesn't, then it's a bluegrass banjo. It's louder and brighter. We know how all the bluegrass people are. They want to be heard. <laughs> so a uh, couple other interesting things about the banjo. This fifth string peg here always plays the same note. It's a drone string. Nobody knows who, what, where, when, why. The oldest one they found goes back to about the 1820s, but most of them started appearing around the time of the Civil War. A lot of things from the South came up. A lot of things from the North went down during the Civil War. So three main ways to play this. Pick up with your fingernail, long fingernail, brush for the chord, strum, uh, pick string five for the single note. Or hit down, brush, fifth string. Best up picking style performer is a guy named Pete Seeger. It's the style I play. Best down picking style was a guy named Grandpa Jones who was on Hee Haw and all over the country. And then back in the early 1900s, some young whippersnapper wanted to be able to play more notes faster. So he used thumb and two fingers and started alternating them, kind of like this. And his name was Earl Scruggs. And he joined a band by, uh, whose leader was uh, Bill Monroe, who was from Kentucky, the bluegrass state. So now we have bluegrass style and bluegrass music, Native American genre, okay? Another thing about the banjo, you want to play in a different key on a banjo, you can't just change chords like on a guitar. You have to retune the banjo and learn all new chords, which is why most banjo songs are in one of three or four keys and only have a couple chords in them. First song I want to do for you is going to be a sing-along. I have to retune the banjo. This is a song that was sung a lot around here, sometimes used for ho-dining, so see if you recognize the song before we start singing. I need your help. Got it? Lost my partner, here we go. Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo, 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 skip to my loo, 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 skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. I'll get another one prettier than you. 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 Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo, loo. 
skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. One more flash in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Skip to my loo, my darling. Loo, loo, skip to my loo, loo, loo. Skip to my loo, loo, loo. Skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. Thank you. That was in the Mexican key. You know what the Mexican key is? C. C. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucy makes me say these. <laughs> now we're going to change, retune to the key of surprise. G! This is another popular hoedown song about a weirdo man by the name of Joseph. Anybody here named Joseph? No, it's too bad. I used to live on the mountain top, now I live in town. Staying at the big hotel, courting Betsy Brown. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I say. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, now I'm going away. Feel free to stomp your hands or clap your feet, okay? Woo! Old Joe Clark, he had a house 15 stories high. Every story in that house built with chicken pie. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I say. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, now I'm going away. Where's Noel? There's Noel. Noel, this is a warning to you, okay? Listen closely. Never marry an old school teacher, tell you the reason why. She blows her nose in old cornbread, calls it pumpkin pie. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I say. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, now I'm going away. <laughs> Whew, thank you so much. Now we come to the most important instrument and most unknown instrument in Pennsylvania German culture. Probably, maybe, if I'm lucky, two or three people here might know what you call this thing. Usually nobody does. Anybody know besides Lucy? This is called a Scheitholt or Scheitholtz. It comes from Germany. It was brought over with early immigrants. Uh, the ancestors of these are over in Germany. We know where it comes from. Best collection in the entire world is in the Mercer Museum in Dorstein. You've never been there? Man, it is fantastic. Henry Mercer was a fantastic guy. The way they made them, a lot of them were homemade. They have frets on here to show you where to press down to change the note. They had five, six, seven, eight, nine strings. Two for melody, and the rest were all drone strings, same note. And you would strum with your right hand with something. A goose quill was popular. Today we use picks. And change the note with your left hand with your finger. Or a piece of dial called a noter. So I'm going to sit down and play the scale for you. It's diatonic instrument, do, re, mi. And then I'll play you a Pennsylvania Dutch lullaby that my wife and I used to sing to our kids when they were little. I've sung this song, trying to put them to sleep. And for festivals and fairs and programs, probably five, six, seven hundred times in my life already. And I want to tell you one thing. When you try to use it to put your kids to sleep, it doesn't always work. <laughs> so listen for the scale. Don't read me. And then I'll do the song, which is called Sleep Baby Sleep, or Shloaf Bubbly Shloaf. This is a very quiet instrument. Slow, bubbly, slow, 
Didari hit the show, the mummy hit the vice key, the comp net hem, the smarty of free, slow for bally slow. Thank you. Now, what I want you to do is look closely at these two and see how they're similar and how they're different. Okay? This thing, who can tell me what it's called? <laughs> dulcimer. This is a mountain dulcimer or lap dulcimer or plucked dulcimer or strum dulcimer. Uh, came from this thing. It was developed in this area, southeastern Pennsylvania, by Pennsylvania Germans. Uh, and then carried into the southern Appalachians where it survived, almost died out around here. Uh, most people never heard of that, never believed that, until a guy named Alan Smith did his doctoral dissertation on this thing. Later it was published as a book, and if you're interested, you can look at it. It's right up here on, my, on the table up here, uh, which proves that this was developed in this area by the Pennsylvania Germans and we never get credit for it, like many other things, unfortunately. So, what they did, a couple improvements. You can see they moved the fingerboard to the center, they raised it up, they made the body bigger, they put real tuning gears on here instead of pegs like on a fiddle, uh, so they can tune it much better, and most importantly, they put the frets, the little metal pieces under all the strings, which means now, instead of just melody, you can also play chords. And it sounds much louder and much nicer. So the previous song would sound like, sound like this. So this made the dulcimer a much more versatile instrument. In fact, now you can play a lot of fast songs on it, even though it was used mostly for slow and or religious songs. Uh, there's even a guy from uh, southeastern Pennsylvania who supposedly recorded a dulcimer cut on one of the Rolling Stones records. And then I almost went into shock last year. I actually, I have to admit it, I do watch occasionally American Idol. And uh, one of the female punk rock singers was featured that night, and I almost found it. She was playing a dulcimer. Incredible. So here's a fast song for you. See if you know this song before I sing a verse. For to see my cell sing Polly while I doodle all the day Sal she and my spunky gal sing Polly while I doodle all the day Fare thee well, fare thee well Fare thee well my fairy fay For I'm off to Luciana For to see my sissy and I sing Polly while I doodle all the day Did anybody recognize the ending after that song? 
shave and a haircut, how much? And how much is two bits? Here's the question nobody can ever answer. Why?